Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 746. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I'm here with Susie Leaf from Anglican Futures reporting from Lambeth. All right, welcome to another show. We're glad you could join us. Obviously, there's a lot happening. Lambeth 2022 is occurring over at uh, Kent, uh, England, and I thought we could be talking about that because we have graciously been awarded the time of Susie Leith, who's going to help us talk through some of the bigger topics that are happening over at Lambeth because uh, so far we're at day two and I, I see a lot of chaos happening and we need to talk about what's going on. First, how are you doing, Susie? Well, I think the general feeling is that people are tired. It's only day two. We've got another, I think, eight days to go. Um, people are um, just trying to work out what's going on. We were told today by a bishop, uh, the retired Bishop of Lambeth, uh, Tim Thornton, um, that Lambeth is a work in progress. Um, things seem to be changing every day and they don't seem to have much idea of what's going on. Yeah, and, and I, Lambeth has to be an incredibly difficult struggle, not just you know the, the political issues, not just the social issues going on, the cultural issues, and the chaos over Lambeth 110, but just putting on a event like this where you have hundreds of bishops coming from all over the world to attend a 10-day conference in the middle of summer in England, that's difficult. Add to that all the it's, layers it's of- It's extraordinary hard. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, all Absolutely. the different- I think it took an hour and a half. So I was gonna say, it took an hour and a half to get the bishops and the people um, were seated today before the service started I and mean, you know it's it's a logistical nightmare yeah absolutely um let's talk about the uh non-logistical nightmares but some of the nightmares that are kind of happening behind the scenes and we've heard now for weeks about lambeth calls and some of the uh decisions the primates primates and bishops will be making uh in regards to what they support, don't support, what needs more work around the church. And it's really difficult to describe Lambeth calls. What's more difficult is to find out how the bishops are going to be voting on this. We learned a couple weeks ago that it'll all be handled by electric a vote. And then they changed how many options they have to vote on. And now they're throwing out electric voting and the options. And it may be because I don't speak English speak as well as you do. I don't know what's going on now, and I need you to really help, uh, as a, a person from Britain, explain to us what's going to happen now with voice votes. Okay, uh, I've never been in a meeting in Britain with, with a voice vote, um, so I cannot tell you exactly what's going to happen. But we had it explained to us today at the press briefing, which is that um, the bishops are in tables of sort of seven people that they are discussing uh, what has been written as the call. Um, they get a chance for about an hour to talk about it amongst themselves. They have a chance to a few tables feedback. And then at the end of that time, there's going to be the opportunity for people, the, the bishops, to say whether or not they think the, and I think the quote, to quote, the general direction of the call is something that they can go with. And if they think that they, they can go with it, we're told that they will remain silent and if they have a problem with it, uh, they will raise their voice and say that it's a problem. Now, we were told that the, the today's vote, which was on um, safe church, perhaps unsurprisingly, that one went through um, um, unanimously. Obviously, sure. there was not a sound in the room. But it does rather think that um, cultures that are used to being loud and noisy uh, might find it easier to raise their voice at a time like that than a culture uh, which is more perhaps deferent or even have quiet voices. Well, help me out here. Um, what was wrong with the electronic vote? I think they didn't like the numbers game. So yesterday they had a, a vote. Um, they tried to tell us that 99% of the bishops were in favor and therefore the, the, the call had been affirmed. If you actually looked at the numbers, um, 
there were probably about 180 bishops meet, missing from the vote. We didn't know whether they abstained or whether they just didn't come to the to the meeting. Um, and 66% of them did say yes, they liked it. 33% of them had, had chosen that the, um, I um, think this needs some more work before I could agree to it. Uh, but apparently that adds up to 99% of people being absolutely in favor. So I think, yeah, it's that they claim there was confusion. They claim people didn't know which button to press. I mean, we have had that situation at Synod in England where a bishop has pressed the wrong button. I no, think quite famously. I, I, uh, I, I, do, I, I agree with that. I've been in rooms where I've had to vote and it's been confusing. I'm an IT person. I've had an IT person explain the voting to me before and it was still confusing. Uh, you have Englishmen explaining to English persons at this the uh, Church of England Synod and it's still not uh, able to work out. I can't yeah. imagine what it's like multicultural, multi-language uh, to understand the electric voting. I, 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 I give them a pass on that. I'm still confused by how the voice vote will work as you, you are as well. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and I don't think they know, they, you know, we talked a little bit to the bishops afterwards and they were talking about the fact they, they, where, where it's something that's relatively simple, they can see how it'll work, but they're going to have to come up with a more sophisticated system, uh, particularly for the sort of human dignity call where there are obviously going to be some um, very um, differing views. Were you at the opening service today? I was, yes. I was hidden away in the media area, which was right at the back of the cathedral. Okay. So I couldn't see a lot, um, but was part of it. So on Friday, the Global South uh, announced that they were not going to uh, recommend to the bishops of the Global South that they attend the Eucharist. And it's my understanding that the Lambeth conference would not allow people to take pictures during the Eucharist today. Is that a correct understanding? Yeah, that was that's right. We were told that it was a time of um, a sort of it was a personal moment. It was a very um, holy moment, mm -hmm. and therefore no photographs should be taken. Um, and we also had the slightly complex situation where earlier on, before the service started. It was acknowledged that some people would not be taking communion, um, but it was interestingly the wording that the Archbishop of Can Canterbury used that was, was that everyone was welcome at the table. And But if you felt you didn't want to take communion for one reason or another, uh, it would be good to go up to the, um, the people giving out the communion and to ha receive a blessing. Yeah. It was hard for people to stay in their seats. Yeah. So who knows what happened? <laughs> no, I, but certainly there were, I, I've spoken to many people who said they had a very, uh, 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 a quiet moment with God as they sat in their seat. So okay. who knows the exact numbers? Well, I was at the uh, opening service. But it's a divided and, communion and it had to oh, be yeah. acknowledged. Yeah, absolutely. I was at the, uh, the divided service in 2008, uh, held also in uh, Kent. Mm. Uh, England and it was a beautiful service but there were people who were not there who were supposed to be there and you could tell there was division in the communion at that point I could only imagine it's worse now because even though the press is picking up that uh, Lambeth is united in prayer I don't think they're united in kind and united in belief and I kind of see two things happening here I see uh, biblical bishops getting together and I see kind of a, a brood of vipers getting together and uh, you know I hate to say it that way but there's a there's still a lot happening on social media Twitter and and Facebook where people are not living into the reality of the gospel and I, I say this as a sinner uh, you know if I, I may be the number two sinner of all time Paul took number one sorry but uh, you know when the world sees this, are they seeing the church of the future? And how can that, that be controlled? So, you know, a lot going on. Anything yeah, else you we had a, Go ahead. Yeah, we had a piece on our, well, I was gonna say, we had a piece on our, on our website, uh, just really picking that up. And, and a few other people have picked up a similar idea, which is these, it, it feels like there are two different families here. 
you know there is a family of relatively poor um relatively um insignificant people who love the lord and are, uh, and are longing uh, to see um the church grow and they are seeing growth and this you know it's a vibrant exciting family and then there is a family which has a lot of wealth and a lot of power um but is one generation away from extinction yeah oh, absolutely i mean and i hate to use this but lambeth at the, at this with what we can see going on is at an extinction level event here you know if you can't get this right if we can't get the gospel right if we can't get the transformation right if we can't get sex right what good are we as a church what do we offer culture and mm -hmm. yeah, it's hard to watch yeah. from thousands of miles away and and that was i think arch yeah archbishop munir annie's put it beautifully when he said you know a broken church can't bring good news uh to uh to a broken world and as as the ex-leader of the the global south you know his prayer is that we would deal with these things at lambeth and so far i haven't seen a lot of evidence um that there is a desire to do anything more than keep repeating the mantra that we're walking together no and, I, and uh, apply power and pressure and money where they can uh you brought up the two different churches the western church here when i see them on social media and you know that they understand now that money can buy influence uh with these some of these uh poorer countries and it's sad to watch you know very sad mm -hmm. susie i've taken up uh 12 minutes of your time and i want to thank you again i hope I oh my goodness you. <laughs> a, couple, a couple times more this week uh, as Lambeth continues. But thank well, you for your faithful work. No problem. Thanks for, for having me. It's been a joy.